One eyed, one horn, flying purple people eater. Pop it. Pop it. RuPaul's Drag Race. I was also watching Secret Celebrity Drag Race. Oh, love it. Hello, Miss Mojo fans. It's Eliza. And Sam here to recap episode 11 of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Beware, there are spoilers ahead. And our leaderboard is also ahead, so stay tuned until the end for that. So this week's maxi challenge is the one queen show. It's kind of like a one woman show comedy vibe. Now you can play multiple characters or just be yourself. Anything goes. And we've got a huge star as a guest this time. Whoopi Goldberg is judging this maxi challenge. Yes, the EGOT winner herself. Finally, we have a guest judge that matches up with the challenge. I'm really excited to see Whoopi and these queens together. So this week's mini challenge is the puppet challenge because everybody, everybody loves, loves puppets. puppets. We get some shady boots all around, but the winner is Jackie. Cherry, uh, what did I tell you about chewing the scenery? Sure. What was your name again? <laughs> Another strong mini challenge from Jackie. Hopefully she can convert that into a main stage win. Seriously, Jackie is the mini challenge queen. This is my third mini challenge win. Does this add up to a maxi challenge win? So for winning, Jackie gets to decide the order and nobody wants to go last. Girl. I mean, I don't care at this point. If it's gonna be funny, bitch, it's gonna be funny. All right, Jada, Jada signed up for it. Well, all right now. Gotta make it work. <laughs> so we start off with Jackie. She is between two parents. In the rehearsals, I was definitely a little nervous for Jackie because it was a bit meandering. She started off with like a history of drag race. Um, Jackie, this is gonna get somewhere soon, right? And then she did a great job. It was so good, it was so sweet, and it was so personal and heartfelt. It was just, it, was, it felt exactly like a one-woman show. Go to your room and go study your book on male anatomy. <laughs> well, you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I agree there. I thought she was the one who embodied the spirit of the challenge the most. She really had a through line, a story beginning to end. And I learned that having someone who always wants to make sure that nothing bad will ever happen to you, that's real love. And I also learned to hide that feather boa a little better. <laughs> For me, this was Jackie's do or die week. If she couldn't convert this into a win this week, I don't see her in the top four. All right, let's move on to Crystal. Crystal, AKA Phenomenal Phil, exotic dance instructor. If it sounds crazy, it's because it is. This first move is the litter box. But <laughs> get yourself in the mind of a pussycat. And then you gotta get that soiled sand, like, out of here. Crystal predicted Joe Exotic. When she did the mullet dance. <laughs> it was just hilarious. It was funny and it was cute and it was colorful. And it still it had that Crystal energy in it, right? She's, she's so good at imbuing herself into everything that she does. I thought it was freaking hilarious, man. Crystal is living up to her name because the pressure of this competition is turning her into a diamond. I'll be in the back selling my DVD, but only for about 20 minutes because I am performing at a bar mitzvah later. Heidi. Heidi, 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 ho. Heidi had a family cookout. Oh, Lord have mercy, here comes Sharon with that nasty ass potato salad, oh, Lord. And it seemed like a good idea in theory, and it was Heidi, right? So you have the sense that it's really gonna work out. I thought it was strange to see Heidi fumble on this one. It seemed like one that was right up her alley. I found she needed a bit more story, which is strange to say about Heidi, because she always comes with a story. And she was entertaining, but it wasn't very focused. It felt very all over the place. Heidi was not up to her usual standard. Baby, the ship is, it's not sinking, but it's a few holes in it. Yeah, okay, good night, everybody. Okay, Gigi. So much to say about Gigi. First of all, concept already hilarious. Welcome aboard Brimstone Airways Flight 666, nonstop to hell. Rue and Whoopi kept telling her to get out of her head and to just kind of go with it. Don't think about it. Say whatever comes out of your mouth. <sighs> It's so much easier said than done. It's not the most actionable advice. But then she turned it out. I thought it was pretty darn funny. I thought she managed. She had some really funny lines in there. She was interacting with the audience, which was cool. You, what's your name? Morgan. 
I'm gonna call you Karen from now on, is that okay? <laughs> yes, there were times when you could see the wheels were turning and she was thinking of her script in her head, but I was like, hey, it's a good script. My favorite part of Gigi was her crowd work. When she felt the moment, she was at her strongest. I see you're wearing distressed denim. It's 2020. <laughs> keep that in mind. Okay. <sighs> and I suppose Next. we have to talk about... We don't usually spend that much time talking about obviously, but her performance was like 17 minutes long and it was supposed to be five minutes. I have thoughts on that. I was like, why don't the judges say something? I didn't really understand that. Yes, my tone is very pointed right now. I call party foul. You can't say you don't want to go last and then eat up all the time of the last performer. That was such a shady move and I thought she should have been penalized for it. Miss Sherry, bitch. Come on now, honey. So last, but maybe least, Jada Essence Hall with a story about one time she peed at a pageant. Should have been a great story. Yeah, exactly. Should have been a great story. It was confusing. It seemed like she was already into the story before I knew what story she was telling. I'm in a situation. I'm gonna need a little bit of help, okay? She could have just come out of the beginning and said, hey, this is the story about how I pissed myself. She had a moment of connection with Whoopi in the rehearsal, which was great and sweet, but unfortunately the performance itself didn't work. So sorry, Jada. Ooh, y'all not feeling it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, we're going on a journey. Jada is not one to make excuses for herself. So this week I'll do that. She was thrown under the bus by Jackie and She didn't want to go last. She sucked out all the air from the room by staying on for 17 minutes. The audience just wants to leave after that. Then you're thrown off your game because the person before you went too long. You screw up your delivery. The audience already isn't having it. Next thing you know, it's a train wreck. And I think that's what happened to Jada this week. Obviously, she didn't deliver like she normally does, but I'm not gonna pin it all on her. So we're gonna take it to the runway. Runway, runway category, category is, is the color purple. It was really fun to see the different interpretations. First of all, I want Ruth's dress. Hot damn, I want that dress. The slit and the makeup was so perfect. I want it, can I have it? Please, can I have it? Once I saw Rue's dress, I thought everyone was gonna come out in a glamorous purple, and then out comes Jackie as one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater, and it was totally like whimsical and wild. In the last couple weeks, I've been saying it, we want something a little more out of the box from Jackie. She's really good at doing her 60s, 70s, throwback glamour stuff. This was the first week that I saw her go all the way with it and go for edgy Jackie, and I loved it. All the colors, the shapes worked really, really well for me. Then we had Crystal. She was a purple cow made of fabric scraps. Perfectly Crystal, purple cow, stunning. Every week she sets herself apart on the runway, and that's why everyone friggin' loves her. Next we had Heidi something. Heidi something. Aphrodite seemed to stick for a little bit this week. Michelle, don't you just love that name? It's the best one out of the last 20. She came out in a full glamour look after we saw the two whimsical looks. Beautiful purple lace with a nice back cutout, and it was lovely. I really liked Heidi's hair and makeup this week. Heidi was giving me pageant queen, big hair, eleganza, realness. Loved it. Then we had Gigi Good aka Daphne from Scooby-Doo. I absolutely love this outfit. It was such a perfect, cute look for Gigi. We've seen this silhouette before, true, but it did work. The sheer on the sleeves, that was mm. a nice touch. Gigi coming through the runway, looking like a Scooby snack. I love it. She knows how to work those legs. And then we had Jada Essence Hall, very sexy, but at the same time, very regal. What can I say? This is exactly what we expect from her. She was dripping in expensiveness. Expensive honey. Oh, just love that dripping gorge. You six are really some of the best we've ever had here. Ooh. So the winner of this week's challenge was, drum roll please, finally, Crystal! <laughs> it was well deserved. She's been slowly and steady working her way up from the top. Crystal could still take this thing. She really cemented herself as a front runner. I think this win put her in the top four. It was also a do or die week for Jackie and Jackie wasn't able to convert the win. So I think what happened here was we saw Crystal kind of take it as the comedy queen. Crystal's been the lovable weirdo and the fact that she's now cemented herself in a place at the top with the others just feels so right. Unfortunately, Heidi and Jada both had the weakest performances of the night, ended up in the bottom, but the lip sync. Okay, let's set the scene. Everyone's wearing purple from head to toe. Prince is playing, 1999. This is where looking expensive set Jada apart from Heidi. They were kind of both in the same sort of gown situation, but Jada's was just a little more dripping. You could just tell there was 
an extra layer of opulence there. But she didn't rest on it, and she also brought it to the lip sync. Jada had kicks, splits, she ripped off her wig at the beginning and had a new wig on underneath. And the whole time, the thing that I thought was the most awesome was she was like looking right at the judges. Heidi definitely did her thing, but I think it's one of those lip syncs where you can see from the get-go, one person's got it in the bag, and it was Jada. Jada Essence Hall, Shantae Yuste. Unfortunately, it was Heidi's time. Kiddo, you're a star. I'm so excited for the world to see you. They're gonna love you. You know, it was sad to see Heidi go, of course, but she got a really, really warm farewell from Rue and she had a really sweet exit line. A small town queen with big city aspirations. Watch out world, cause Heidi's coming through. And remember, if I can do it, so can you. Heidi did not lose this competition only because she didn't win. She gave us so much. This is the beginning for Heidi and Closet, Heidi Aphrodite, Heidi something. Heidi ho, goodbye de ho. All right, so on to our standings. Y'all know how this works at this point. Number one, we have a tie between Gigi and Jada, both with six points in the competition so far. Behind them, we have Crystal with four points, and bringing up the rear is Jackie with zero. But now we're gonna switch to the much more interesting power rankings, which is the last three weeks. We have Crystal in the top spot with four points in the last three weeks. Jada right behind her with two points, Gigi at negative one, and again, Jackie bringing up that rear with minus three points. I love seeing in the power rankings who has the most momentum. We can clearly see here that Crystal and Jada have jumped out as front runners and we love to see it. At one point there, it felt like we had a clear front runner in Gigi, but now it feels like not over until it's over. It's anybody's game right now. Maybe not Jackie's, but anybody else's game. Jackie will have to do a lot next week to convince us that she's top four material. All right, we are done for this week. You know how this goes. Now we turn the floor over to you. Make sure you like, comment, all those good things. Also look out for our upcoming All Stars 5 cast reveal video, where we're gonna bring you through the recently announced cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 5. I know who I'm excited for. Eliza, do you know who you're excited for? Oh, I am so excited for several folks. That's all I'll say for now. So comment below, let us know who you're excited to see. As always, you can follow our Instagram at MissWatchMojo, my Instagram at TheBeatEasy, or my Twitter at BeatEasy. We will see you again next Sunday, only on Miss Mojo. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.